Science is something is a tool that I believe that God has given man wisdom to be able to to mm. observe and be able to answer certain questions. And it's meant to also bring you back to the point of saying we couldn't answer that question. Why? Because we don't have the necessary understanding for it. We have to go to the person who created it. Science is just there to aid us. Mm. It's not meant to be our God. is guys how can science and God reconcile? Mm. Scientists in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> in the middle? You wanna start? Scientists. Me? Mm, yeah, the scientist. Oh. Who told you that? <laughs> nah. Um can they reconcile? Um I, to a degree, yes, but because what I feel like when it comes to science and then make this comparison with God and science, like some actually approach science with the preconceived notion that all science is factual. When even when the concept has been even called a theory, they still see it as factual. They haven't understood. But wait, this is a theory. You already before you start talking about it, you acknowledge that it's not definitive. So for example, like Big Bang, or even evolution in a sense, because even at my university, like even in our course, it's a manual therapy course. But then evolution is taught. Like you have to they ask you questions. So from an evolutionary perspective, or they teaching curriculum as if this is definitive fact but it's always already acknowledged as a theory so mm. it's like just like so when you're approaching this question just say okay so what to understand that within science there are things that are straight theory and they're not definitive as well but i think coming from this angle they can make us out in the sense that we just look at creation itself like like for example okay science says that we have something called dna it's essentially mm -hmm like our genetic code, it's like a blueprint mm -hmm. within us. So, well, even under that, because even there's even textbooks, I, was, I think one of them is the Essentials of Anatomy and Physiology, where it talks about how the definition of even DNA is like the blue, essentially, I'm going to paraphrase this slightly, but it's a, the blueprint for a living organism. So if it's a blueprint, I even Googled blueprint, you can Google it too, it's a, it means design plan. Mm. So essentially DNA is the design plan for a living organism. Mm. So. And that's always something that's the foundation of science, DNA. So therefore, if it's defined, definition is important. Definition is very important. If it's defined as being something that is essentially a design plan. Mm. So is it what we just come instructions? Like, where, if there's a design plan, there must be a designer. But the fact that, here's the thing, we hear that, but science has defined it as a design plan. They've said design plan. So there must be design. Especially to the intricate detail of what, what we're made up with. And obviously, that's why God comes in, that God created us. Because, I mean, you know, we are an intelligence. Mm. And it's like, but we have a specific set of instructions. Therefore, a greater intelligence must have created us. Now, one thing to understand, even if we're talking about God, because some people will talk about things in the Bible that seem very supernatural. But the claim of God in itself professes the supernatural. How can you say that, oh, but that's very supernatural. But the fact that you're saying one created the natural he must supersede the natural, transcend the natural. Therefore, the concept of the supernatural is very natural if you're saying there's a God. Like, mm -hmm. You can't really separate the two from them. Can you, so, that, can you say that again? Just to, I, I one more time. It, but I didn't catch it. Okay. So essentially, <laughs> if we're to doubt the supernatural, but to, mm -hmm. to believe in God makes no sense. Because if you're saying the natural has a creator, he must be above the natural, hence mm. supernatural. He must transcend the natural. Mm, so wow. to believe in God, you accept the natural. You cannot claim God without believing in the supernatural. Otherwise, mm. then you don't. If you're saying there's no supernatural, then you're saying there's no God. You're saying there's nothing that, that is above the natural. Mm. So therefore, to say that there is God and you don't believe in the supernatural, you can't, they can't go together. So some people talk about well, how can there be? How can the God flood the earth? He's super. He's God. The fact that we're, we're talking about a God, supernatural. Mm. So therefore, the supernatural. When I'm bringing up things that are supernatural, cannot be alien to you. Because I'm talking about God, one that trans God, one that transcends the natural, that even created the natural, that intelligence is above the natural. Mm -hmm. We are created by Him. We are within that the natural. We see one another. So therefore, He transcends us. Therefore, how can one that is created by an intelligence think to even fully comprehend that intelligence that is above them? Because the Bible even says His understanding is infinite. In another place, it says it's unsearchable. Wow. But log even in a logical standpoint, it makes sense because if He is above the natural, we are inferior to him, therefore his intelligence must be superior to him to, in, to create us. So there's just some considerations, basically. Uh, yeah. I, might have, I, might have opened the, I might have opened the can of worms, but we'll see where we go from there. Wow. <laughs> well, a lot of food in there. 
Mm. Wow. Can you hit that, sis? <laughs> yeah, like, even I'm learning. That was that was powerful. I think what you said was was beautiful, and it actually reminded me of Genesis. Because when you look at what science is, it's essentially the application of knowledge, and it's using systems or systematic methods to essentially bring evidence as to why something has come to being or why it's there. But okay, so let's break down systems first of all. When we see Genesis, we see system. We see day one, we see day two, we, do, we see day three. It might, not, it might not give like, okay, the molecular compounds were created and blah, 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 blah. But we see a system which shows that God has an order. He has a system. There is something in place there that even though it might not say, you know, this is, this is the molecular compounds, blah, 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 blah. you know, there's this atom and this atom. It still, it still makes sense. Um, I think also what came to my mind when you were talking is Romans chapter one, when it talks about how essentially you can't deny God because his invisible attributes are made known, mm, which yeah. makes sense in terms of the, the supernatural, because we see that, I don't know, when I got saved, yeah, when, when you look at a tree, yeah, <laughs> the tree hits differently. <laughs> the tree hits differently, you're like, wow, look at this tree. It's, it's so unexplainable. And um, I think sometimes with science, we have to be careful because sometimes, yes, it explains how you know how um how things mm. came into being but it doesn't explain why and i think at the root of all of us although you know it's beautiful to understand um you know how things come into being the beauty of scripture is the why it it, it demonstrates the why it demonstrates mm. you know why you're here it demonstrates mm. the purpose it demonstrates you know everything that's going on and i think that's a that that's really what i kind of just like literally just blew up in my mind when you were speaking so yeah, that was powerful. Beautiful. Do you know what? It's funny because obviously you took my uh, answer. Um, so, um, <laughs> Holy Spirit dropping on one. Um, but uh, for all, like, I think the, the I think science can reconcile with yeah. Christianity in a major way. Like, for instance, science in, in its natural terms was actually meant to be an observatory mm. uh, aspect. So you observe things, mm. yeah, and you and you systematically note down how things are happening, how processes are taking place to get to it from A to B. Let's say a plant mm -hmm. has the photosynthesizer, etc. etc. I'm no scientist by the way. I've got to be in science there. But um obviously <laughs> the whole point of science was that it's meant to observe stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And as you quite correctly said, all of these things are theory. A lot of them mm -hmm. are theory. Right? Mm -hmm. And and the problem here is that when you present theory as a fact that's where we have irre 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 oh, how's the word? Irosakala e. <laughs> She's failing me. It doesn't reconcile, basically. All right? Um, so when you're presenting something as a theory, as a fact, it doesn't reconcile. And the reason why is because they've made science of God. Mm. And you're trying to explain something that you don't have an answer for. For instance, when we talk about the, the creation of man, when we present, um, let's say, evolution, the reason why is because you're looking for an answer as to why you're here. How did you get here? And so when you don't have, when you don't want to accept God because that would mean accepting it there's something like that about you that you have to now give up sovereignty to you're now having to make something else of God mm. the universe so the universe mm. suddenly came into being but okay fantastic let's go to the universe why is the universe there mm. Mm. So the question inevitably will go back to the very beginning. I was like, okay, fine, you've explained everything how it comes to being, but why? As you were saying, why does we why do we have that? And and that's the point where science cannot answer it's not meant to answer them mm. because it's not god mm. you know what i'm saying science is something it's a tool that i believe that god has given man wisdom to be able to to mm. observe and be able to answer certain questions and it's meant to also bring you back to the point of saying we couldn't answer that question why because we don't have the necessary understanding for it we have to go to the person who created it science is just there to aid us mm. it's not meant to be our god so in that respect, a lot of what science does, it helps us to understand the way the world works. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's almost like psychology, right? It's to understand how the mind works. It's there to help us. It can't give you the totality of everything, though. So science, what it's meant to, science is meant to be short because what it's meant to say is to you, we don't have an answer at this point. So something else has to fill in that gap. And that's where God comes in. So when science tries to say, no, we don't have the answer, but we're still going to try and fill the gap in, Right, you get things like Big Bang, and I would say to you, listen. Actually, I like Big Bang. I think Big Bang is great. Do you know why? Because if God was to create the world in seven days, it would be like a Big Bang to you. Mm. Because from your perspective, you're not you're you're inside time. God is outside of time. Mm. You understand? And to even explain it to someone still doesn't make sense because we're finite. 
and we understand things in a linear fashion. But we're talking about a God who, if I, if I have indeed the thought that someone's outside of time and they create something, my only natural thought process is to say that means he's, he does everything at the same time. So nothing is done yesterday, nothing was done tomorrow, and everything was done and even my brain is even struggling to compute it. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, so you're asking to understand something that you don't have the processor in your mind to be able to do. And that's where science falls short. But that's where science is beautiful. It's to tell you to say, stop. At this point, you can't do it. Go back to the creator and find out what is after that. That's what I would say. It's like all God is cannot fit in your mind. Mm. Essentially, it can't fit. Because remember, it says, the scripture says that his understanding is infinite or it's unsearchable mm. Mm. unsearchable because many times we hear the term oh science have made a discovery mm. but when it comes to god's understanding it's unsearchable in its fullness mm. you can maybe know in part mm. but it's like in the fullness of the comprehension of god's being in person you can't search it out we'll tell you this is one thing science will not discover it's actually been declared you won't you won't discover mm. it can be revealed mm. you, but in terms of searching you can't unless it takes the individual to give revelation mm. because at times for searching it has been declared you can't do it but it mm. makes sense because if you're saying there's a god you know created the earth he knows there's what seven billion and upwards people in the earth, near eight billion he knows every single one of their thoughts and at that same moment he's keeping the earth floating in space he's not, mm. he's not dropping it's there he's keeping it there mm. he's ensuring the sun don't burn the earth stay this distance don't if you ever hear you'll scorch it. Stay there. Yeah. And he's doing all these things at once. And you think you can discover his understanding in its fullness. And he's doing that. Mm. And then in each of those billions of people, this one has this many hairs. That one has that all big billy. They have this this one has this many hairs, that many hairs. You're saying such a being and intelligence. You're trying to discover. He has to just decide to reveal it to you. Mm. That's why, and that's uh, that's why why would maybe God do that? humility because it's like man wants to say i did it mm. but this one says the thing to ask is to be humble it's like mm. if you say no no i know i know i know i can do it myself that's like pride wants to do it by himself well one manifest pride is deep, distinct and quite deep one manifestation is like i want to do it on my own mm. i want to find it on my own i want to do I, it's a lot of i mm. a lot of independence in remember again pride is deep we're talking about a, 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 like one manifestation in a certain context but that's probably even even because pride is even so deadly. Maybe that even keeps man from pride. When God is just saying, "Well, ask me, mm. ask me." I mean, the prophet, the prophets of old had visions and they saw things to do about the creation. So it's like, yeah, you can ask me. So humility. Why? Because it even says, like you said, it makes them pause. Say, okay, we can't answer this question. Now ask God. Why? Because He wants relationship. So mm. it's like saying, mm. I'll leave some things a bit difficult for you mm. as you're searching. Because I want relationship with you. Ask me. Let's talk. Mm. Come, let us reason. That's what the Bible says. Let's talk. Because that's the, the end of it all. He, like we said, the, the, the finite message of the whole Bible is reconciliation of a relationship. Mm. Even the little clues you'll leave in, in that we discover through science the little, is to really make you turn and say, who is this creator? Because even, isn't that what Newton did when he discovered the law of gravity? It made him just more, he was in more awe of God. He's like, he discovered, yes, there's a law of gravity. Mm. And then it was his response, wow, what a God. It's like, that's what it's meant to do. You discover, you make your discoveries that he allows you to make. And then you say, wow, Lord God, tell me more. Mm. It's meant to actually bring you to him, not to replace him. Mm -hmm. right. mm. And um, I think as well, as, as you were talking, I think when we look at science and, and nature itself, it really reveals God's love. Um, I came across um, a theory and I, I'll share it. So I was reading um, a book. I can't really remember where I read it. But um, essentially, the, the Christian was essentially saying that he doesn't believe in um, evolution. Because when you look at evolution, it's about survival of the fittest. And survival of the fittest is essentially based on who survives, who doesn't. And essentially, especially when it comes to like the food chain, like it's, it's essentially one person dying for the sake of another. But when you look at Christ, he died in the place like of all of us. And I found that really interesting because I was like, okay, so when, when we look at it from that perspective... I guess I mean I'm not really sure how to how to take it, but we can see that when we look at nature, it really demonstrates God's love, and we can see His glory in nature. 
And sometimes, again, it's it's such a complicated conversation. Mm. You know, will we ever understand it? You know, the mysteries of God, will we understand the depths of it? Especially since he created it and all we can really do is go to him. So, yeah.